to go into your story a little bit more, what businesses did you start before you got into filmmaking? Well, I used to have a, a cleaners and I used to have a, a pager business. And because of the cleaners in the pager business, it's always a constant hustle. It's, I always had to market uh, the pay, my pager businesses and my, my uh, cleaners. So it was always that hustle, always that hustle. So I own two pager business and I own the cleaner and, and the cleaners. Can you tell me what that, like every day, what that was like? What like, mm -hmm. you're getting up in the morning and what, with the pager business, what are you doing? So when I started to do pages, uh, initially my brother uh, got me into the pager business. He had a pager business that was very successful in Chicago. It was like, it was like very well known, very popular. So I wanted to get into the pager business because I saw how successful he was doing financially. And so what I would do is I would go to his pager shop and I would buy pagers. And from buying the pages, I would go and put, it in, put them in a briefcase <laughs> in, the, in cell phones, put them in a briefcase. And I would go throughout the city of Chicago and I would sell them. I would go to different places and just sell the pages and uh, sell the, uh, the, the, the telephones and I would save the money. And once I saved the money for, uh, to get a place, my own uh, store, then I opened my first store and then I would save that money and I opened my second store. And I said, this is, you know, because the money kept, because during the 90s, the pager, pages were very hot. Right. And then from the pagers is when I decided, okay, uh, a, young, a young guy was, he was selling his cleaners. I was like, okay. And that was like, the cleaners is like right down the street from my home. And I was like, you know, let me just try to clean it, the cleaner business. So I uh, went in, I purchased the cleaners business from him and I had the cleaners. <laughs> and so that's what got me, yeah. And did you know anything about the cleaner business before? Not at all, absolutely wow. not. I didn't know anything about the pager business. I didn't know anything about the cleaning business at all. So are you kind of just like on your feet, learn as you go, just kind of like put me out there in the trenches, I'll figure it out yes. kind of person? Same thing with filmmaking. I didn't go to, I didn't go to film school. Uh, when I uh, shot my first film, I had, I had absolutely no, no idea how to make a movie. And interesting story is, <laughs> um, when I shot my first film, I shot everything in a wide shot. And so when I gave the, the footage over to, the, uh, to my editor, he was like, yo, where are your medium shots and your close-ups? So I, I learned, and I'm still learning, this is still a process, and I learned as I went along. And so I applied that same energy uh, that I had in the pager business and the cleaning business to the film business. Do you have sort of a curiosity about everything, about how it works, and you yeah. enjoy oh, figuring it out? I, I enjoy figuring it out. Yeah, yeah because if I, if I, I'm not the type of person and I, I, this is what I tell film make, filmmakers all the time, is just go out there, even if you feel like you don't know it, go out there and just do it, and you will, you will learn, you will learn, you will figure it out. You know, it's just on the job training. Because I heard Spike Lee say one time that he didn't feel like he was an actual filmmaker until he did do, do the right thing. And when he did school days, he was like, he had more toys to play with, you know. And so, with me is that, as I go along, as I was going along in, in, in the pager business, in the cleaning business, in the film business, I learned. I was kept learning. I'm still learning. Still a learning process. Yeah. Well, in your IMDb bio, it says that just do it. The Nike slogan is your favorite saying. So I was going to ask you why. What, what, what about that, you know? Just do it. Because I hear a lot of, like, when I do workshops in Chicago or wherever I do workshops at, uh, I, I don't, like, people, they want to make films, but they're this block, right? And my thing is, get over that hurdle and just go out and go and do it. Just make it happen. And again, like if people see that you're working and people see that you're doing things, people want to help. They just want to help if they're seeing that you're making the effort to do things. You know, and if people, if, if you're doing out here and you're constantly, constantly making films for us, and you have someone who just doesn't want to help, then you don't bother about that person. Let them go. Don't even think about it. Don't even harp, harp on, that, on that person because a lot of th times we concentrate on the negative instead of concentrating on those people who actually want to help us. So I say just do it. Just make it happen. Do you need very little sleep? I could see you just being passionate about something <laughs> and it's like three in the morning and you're like, oh, you know what? I better go to bed. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm very, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm, I'm very passionate. Uh, so even when I did the pager business and the cleaner business, I always knew there was something missing. And I didn't know what it was. I always knew I wanted to write and I didn't know um, what I want. I mean, I, I didn't know whether it wanted to be plays or books. 
And then I stumbled into, you know, the screenplays. And, um, and when I stumbled into the screenplays, I had no idea at all that I wanted to direct movies. You know, so when I actually had no other choice but to direct my own film is when I found my true passion. And so, I mean, that's, 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 that's how it's been. So you're in L.A. to promote a film? Or? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm in L.A. to promote a, a film, my new film. It's called Black and Privilege, Volume 1. Yeah. Okay. And so it's screened today, actually, before... We have this interview? Yeah, it's screened today. Uh, we screened at the uh, Cinemark in Baldwin Hills at the Baldwin City Theater. Nice. Did you have a Q&A? Yes, we did have a Q&A. It's interesting because uh, a lot of older people, this one lady was like 88 years old who came out to the screening, and it was like a, it was filled with a lot of older people in their 60s and 70s. And again, like one lady was 88 years old. And I was very surprised because of, uh, I should say surprised, but it, it made me think because this is this was, was our third screening here. Uh, we screened twice. We screened yesterday and we screened today. And it was a much younger crowd. And today it was a much older crowd. And the feedback from the older crowd was pretty different than the feedback from the younger crowd, and, which I found to be very interesting. But but it's always going to be like that as filmmakers. We're going to get you know people going to view your work differently. You know, which is good. Therefore, they, you know, they can sit back and they can debate about it, argue about it. And but we have to be open to the criticism that we're going to get as filmmakers, of course, because when we put our work out there. And that's another thing, too, is that as filmmakers, a lot of us, we make films and we feel that it's not perfect. So we don't want to show it to anyone. So if you feel that it's not perfect, that's the perfect time to show it, because what happens is that you show it to an audience and you listen to what the criticism is. And from those criticisms, you t go back into the laboratory and you make those adjustments and you evolve. That's how we evolve and we grow. Like my first film, again, is a film that I shot everything in wide shot. Everything was shot wide shots, right? And so when I, when I was getting, hit, getting the, the constructive criticism, I went back and I knew I had to continue to study. And so as film, that's what we have to do. We have to always see ourselves on the path and as students and always studying. I'm curious, what did the younger people ask versus the older people? Okay, so the older people, uh, one lady said that this is this is a definitely a project that we all should see, in, in particular in the black community, because we all know like what's going on in the black community as far as the violence and things like that. So she figured, you know, and uh, that she was like, you should show this in every black community. So the younger, uh, y the young, yesterday I spoke with a, a much younger woman. And she was like, this was a difficult film to watch. And I was like, what made it difficult? I said, so what made it difficult? And she said, because it's hard to examine self. You know, it's hard to look at self and to examine self. And so this is what the film does, is that it takes the black community, it, t it takes us out of our, it's like an out of body experience, right? And for us to examine the conditions that's going on in our community. And that's the thing, that was the difference between the younger generation and then the older generation, because again, the older generation went through an experience where, you know, growing up where they may, they may live in Mississippi or Alabama where, you know, you had black people who own stores and things like that. But the younger people, you know, they didn't grow up in that, that time period where, you know, black people control the economics of their community. So when you say, okay, this is why there's so much violence in the black community, then it's like, oh, it's difficult to watch. It's difficult to, to look at. Uh, but opposed to an 88-year-old lady who said, okay, we need this in every black community. So that was the difference. Did you ask some of the younger people why they felt that? Yes, uh, because again, the reason why they felt that is because, again, you know, you know it's like some people, right, we like, like, we like to, it's, it's difficult to do a self examination then point the finger and say, this is why th th certain things happen. So it's easy to blame, uh, place the blame on others, opposed to, no matter what it is, sure. you know, uh, no matter what it is, to place the blame on others instead of just looking at, it, doing a self-examination and say, okay, this is how I'm going to correct myself. So a lot of people, a lot of us really don't want to correct self. We want to just, you know, you know, place blame on others instead of just correcting self.